Amen. Let me, first of all, just welcome everyone that's here this evening. I want to thank you for choosing to spend your valuable holiday time sharing with us the celebration of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's birth. I understand that this time of year, folks have family in and things are going on. There's last minute preparations for this and for that. But praise God that we have the opportunity to come together and share with one another the, the joy of celebrating the eve of our Savior's birth. Amen? Amen? So I praise the Lord. Thank you for each one of you coming. And I can think of no better way to celebrate or, or remember the birth of our Lord and Savior than, in, than coming into his house and asking his blessing to be upon all, everything that's going to transpire here this evening. There's a lot of great things that's going to be happening tonight to celebrate his birthday. And I thank you for coming and sharing that one with another. And guys, let's just have a great time opening our heart to him. And to do that, let's start off in prayer. So if you'll bow your heads with me tonight. Father God, I just come with you this, to you this morning. Just thank you for who you are and praise your name that, that we can gather together in this country that, that was based upon your principles. We can freely and openly come together and proclaim you as Lord and Savior. So God, as we have gathered together tonight to, to not just worship you, but to celebrate the greatest gift ever given to man, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray your anointing to be upon us. Bless those that are here. Be with the young people as they come and share, everyone who comes to share this morning, this evening, the songs, everything that was happening tonight. May it all be a testimony and an honor of who you are and what you are. May we truly lift up our hearts to you, and may you be able to sit back with a smile on your face, Lord, knowing that we worship the one who we, loves us the most. And that is you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. It is an amazing child. We are, we are, actually, he's an amazing Lord. But that first birthday, he was that child. So we're going to sing another song. And if you like, you don't have to stand. But if you like, you can stand. But there's going to be another song on the screens. And just sing your heart out this morning. This evening. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our keeping?
silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glorious stream from heaven afar, heavenly hosts sing hallelujah, Christ the Savior is born. Christ our Savior is Matthew twenty one sixteen, and they said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, ha Yes, have you never read out of the mouth of in infants and nursing babies? You have prepared praise. Oh, 
style. <laughs> need Juju's stool there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you guys. Jesus did come to us just as the little play the little skit there presented just as they sang to us and, and praise God we should say thank you to him. Amen? Amen. That's what we're here to celebrate tonight. So we need to remember the Christmas story tonight on, on the on the eve of our Savior's birth. This is the the, the number one time we need to make sure that we know what the scriptures say. And I pray that when you go home tonight that you know and you realize that we are celebrating that on, on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day this season, we are celebrating the fact that we have a Savior and His name is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. That's what we're here for, guys. Christmas is not about the presents. Praise God for the, the cute little rendition that the, the kids just brought the, with the skit. But Christmas isn't about the presents. It's not about the fruitcake. It's not about the ham or the turkey or the meal or the, the feast or the, the goose or whatever may be out there, guys. Christmas is the celebration of God's Son coming into the world. Christmas is the celebration of the, of the pathway being made, a... a, a, a a, a, an avenue being laid out by God so that you and I can step out there and be washed of our sins and know that we have an eternal glory set for us. When we celebrate Christmas, we should remember 
that God came to this earth so that the world could see him, so that the world could, could hear him and know him as the Son of God. It's not just cute movies one per day for the last 25 days. It's not about uh, even getting to travel or do this or that. The true meaning of Jesus Christ is to know that he said that the wages of sin is death, but he sent a pathway. He sent his son that first Christmas morning to grow up and become our pay, our propitiation. Our sin debt has been made full through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. That's what we're celebrating, guys. So I'm going to ask the girls to come up. I should have already asked the girls to come up. I apologize. What these girls are going to do right now, they're going to light their candles. And they're going to come down this center aisle, and they're going to light the candle on the end. And what I'm going to ask you guys to do is share your light with the ones that are beside you. And we're going to hold our lights up tonight in honor of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So let your light shine. Jesus said he who has a light wouldn't hide it under a bushel. Amen? We need to let our light shine. When we hold these candles up tonight, it's not that of a ritual. We want to let others know that there is a light that shines within me, and that is the light of Jesus Christ. And as I hold my light high, I am letting the world know that I celebrate the light of Jesus Christ within me. So don't hide it tonight. I want us all to, to listen to the Christmas story out of the scriptures. Not, not, I love a Christmas story by Charles Dickens, a Christmas carol, but this is the real Christmas story. This is the one out of Jesus Christ, out of the Lord's mouth. So I want to share this with you tonight. As we light our candles, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 2, uh, excuse me, Luke chapter 1. We're going to go to chapter 2, but first we're going to be in Luke chapter 1, starting in verse 26. Luke 1, starting in verse 26. Let your light shine tonight as we read the Christmas story together. Morgan, you got it, babe? Luke 1, starting in verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Rejoice, favored woman, the Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. And then the angel told her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Now Mary asked the angel, How can this be, since I have not been intimate with a man? And the angel replied unto her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And consider your relative Elizabeth. Even she has conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. I am the Lord's slave, said Mary. May it be done unto me accordingly to your word. And then the angel left her. In those days, Mary set out and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judah, where she entered Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then she exclaimed with a loud cry, You are the most blessed of women, and your child will be blessed. How could this happen to me? that the mother of my Lord should come unto me. For you see, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leapt for joy inside of me. She who has believed is blessed because what has been spoken to her by the Lord will be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior because he has looked with favor upon the humble condition of his slave. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. 
because the mighty one has done great things for me and his name is holy. Turn over to chapter 2. Chapter 2, starting in verse 1. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. This first registration took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And then she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him snugly in cloth and laid him in the feeding trough, because there was no room for them at the inn. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. And then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, a Savior who is Messiah, the Lord, was born for you in the city of David. This will be your sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in cloth and lighting in a feeding trough. Suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host of the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and, and see what has happened which the Lord has made known unto us. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the feeding trough. And after seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditating upon them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard just as they had been told. Folks, that's the story of Jesus. That's how he came into the world. That's how he was announced. But guys, the story of Jesus started all the way back into the book of Genesis. And it proclaims, this book right here from Genesis to Revelations, <coughs> Revelation proclaims our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen? I pray tonight as you go home, you'll remember the true story of Jesus Christ. We're going to, the kids are going to come up and they're going to sing a song for you now. baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you've delivered Will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hands? Did you know that your baby boy? has walked where angels trod when you kiss your little baby you kiss the face of god mary did you know mary did you know mary did 
did you know? Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nation? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? Mary, did you know? 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 The story of the birth of Jesus Christ. And the story begins. Caesar Augustus, emperor of all the massive Roman empires, including Palestine, in his greed, called for a census to be taken. In order that not one person be missed in the census, everybody was required to go to their ancestral hometown. In truth, it wasn't very important for everybody to be included in the census. Of much greater importance to Caesar and the Romans was that every Jew be assessed to cruel Roman taxation. And so it was Joseph from the Galilean town of Nazareth, a descendant of King David, was required to go to Bethlehem, David's hometown, to be included in the headcount. And since everybody was required to be there, Mary, Joseph's fiance, although almost nine months pregnant, was required to be there as well. The long and torturous journey left Mary weak and exhausted. But with everybody in town for the census, there was no room available in the inn. The only the best available from Joseph and Mary was a stall in a stable. <clears throat> and while in Bethlehem, the time came for Mary to give birth. And in quarters shared with animals, she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And she wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a hay-filled manger. Now, as, as unpretentious and demeaning as this birthplace would be for any child and parents, this was no ordinary child. And although Mary was indeed the child's mother, the child in truth was the son of God. Mary, a virgin, a mere child herself, we see they visit from an angel, and he proclaimed that she would have a child. Joseph, who at first doubted Mary's claims, received angelic visit as well. And he indeed believed. Imagine then the Son of God born in a barn. <clears throat> and there were in the valley below Bethlehem shepherds keeping guard over the temple sheep. The quiet of the night was suddenly per, uh, per, pierced and by bright light and heavenly music as a multitude of angels announced the birth of the baby of the stable. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace on every man and woman who pleases him. Imagine the poor shepherds, shocked and terrified. But the angel Gabriel calmed their fears. Don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is made for everybody worldwide. A Savior has been born today in the town of David, who is both Messiah and Master. This is what you have to look for. A baby 
wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. Shepherds, considered the lowest of all social classes, being the first to hear the long-awaited Messiah. Now, as the angelic messengers withdrew and returned to heaven, the sheep herders talked it over. Let's go to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see what, the God, what God has revealed to us. Those shepherds, no longer afraid, left running and found David, I mean Joseph and Mary and the baby lying in a manger. On leaving the stable, the shepherds left loose, glorifying and praising the Lord for what they have seen. They bow down with open hearts and worship their newborn king. Their beautiful story of the birth of Jesus. But Jesus did not come to earth to provide us with a feel-good story of the birth of a baby. God's plan for the birth of his son was to provide salvation through payment of sin. Payment which only a sinless substitute could provide. And they led him to a place called the skull. And there they crucified him, along with criminals. Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said that, he breathed his last. The centurion who saw what happened, praised the Lord, saying, Surely this was a righteous man. And they took his body down, wrapped it in cloth, and placed it in a tomb. And the long-awaited Messiah was dead. First thing on Sunday, the woman carrying the burial spices made it to the tomb. The entrance stone had been rolled away, and they could not find the body of Jesus. Two men dressed all in white said, Why are you looking for the living one in the cemetery? He is not here, but he has risen. And so is the accounting of and happening and reason for Jesus Christ coming to earth now complete? In order to fill the promise of God... Christ must be born, the baby Messiah. Christ must walk among us. Christ must suffer and die for our sins. Christ must rise from the dead. But in order to complete the story, Christ must and shall return. The same Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will one day return. Christ must Guys, and the story that my brother just shared with you is absolutely true. We are celebrating the birth of our Messiah tonight. Hallelujah. But he, may, he is going to return, and it may be tonight. If it is tonight, or maybe it's tomorrow, maybe it's in the midst of your feast, whatever it may be tomorrow, wouldn't it be better, rather than be concentrating on presents, you're concentrating on the Lord? Remember that we are celebrating Christmas, but Christmas would not be anything if it wasn't for Easter as well. But because of Easter, my Lord and Savior rose again, and he said, I have gone to, de I have gone to prepare a place for you, hands, with hands not of this world, so that when I return, I can call you all unto myself, and we can be together forever. You know what that tells me? My Lord's going to return and call all those that are his unto himself. And that might be tonight. We can celebrate that we have been given salvation. But even more, I celebrate that that salvation came through the grace and mercy of my Lord and Savior. If you don't know him tonight, you're going home and you're just celebrating a day. You truly want to celebrate Christmas? Make sure you know Jesus Christ and put him first tonight, tomorrow, and the rest of your life. Amen? Take these candles home with you tonight. Take them home and... And maybe light them again tomorrow if you need to. But remember the light that shines from you should not just be a candle, but the light of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Go home tonight. Open presents, whatever your tradition is. Sit with your grandbabies. Sit with your kids. Enjoy your spouses. Or maybe you're just going to go home and just uh, sit and enjoy your Christmas tree. Whatever it is. Make sure that you include Christ in the midst of it. Go bow with me in a word of prayer. Father God, I come before you right now, and I just pray, Lord, that we will let you know that it is you whom we are celebrating tonight. Father, I pray that all that are here tonight have given you the gift of their heart. 
That is the best birthday gift that anyone could give you. For you died for those hearts. May we return them back onto you. Lord, may thy will be done. May your, heart, may your glory be magnified and glorified upon us. And may we take you everywhere we go. Bless each one that's here to get us all home safely, Lord. And just let the kids and everyone just have a great evening knowing that we're celebrating that we have salvation through a mighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And before we close, let me just say this. Tomorrow, if you're able to make services tomorrow, we did move the time. There is no Sunday school. We'll have services at 10 o'clock so that we can gather together and then we'll disperse and head out to our families or wherever it is we may go. So church service is at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Also, we said to kids, but adults as well, it's show and tell. If you would like to bring one of your gifts that you have under the tree, whatever it is, kids, if you want to bring one of your gifts, we're going to have a time and everybody gets to hold their, their gift up and share with everybody what, what they were blessed with tomorrow. So I want to encourage you to do that. And guys, most of all, lift up Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And all God's people said? Amen. Amen. You may be dismissed tonight.